the late 1960s drastically changed the city of Philadelphia. The manufacturing economy, which the city had relied so heavily on, was collapsing. In a decade, the city would lose about 140,000 of its manufacturing jobs. Shipyards and department stores rapidly declined and closed. As the economy collapsed, so did race relations. Since World War II, the black population of Philadelphia had doubled, leaving new migrants without stable jobs. In 1964, race riots broke out in North Philadelphia, leaving 339 people injured, including police. Hundreds were arrested, and the neighborhood was left with $23 million worth of property damage. During this explosive moment in the city's history, the Philadelphia chapter of the Black Panther Party was formed as a part of a national movement who believed that the only way to fight police brutality was to arm African Americans. In the summer of 1970, a park ranger named Sergeant Von Collin was brutally murdered by a young black man. Without clear evidence, Police Chief Frank Rizzo pinned the murder on the Black Panther Party, stoking racial tensions in the city. Um, Frank Rizzo was the chief of police at that time, and he had a local and national reputation as a uh, tough, no-nonsense, law-and-order police officer. Rizzo was in constant conflict with black power groups in the city, so it was not surprising when he used the murder to justify raiding three Black Panther offices in the city. They named the game, and I hope they name a rough game, and they won't be around to bother anybody. Police came in heavily armed with submachine guns. They humiliated Panthers by ordering them to stand naked against the wall at gunpoint. Reggie Shell, a member of the Black Panther Party, recalls the event. Each cop took an individual Panther and placed their pistol off the back of our neck and told us to walk down the street backward. They told us if we stumble or fall, they're going to kill us. Then they lined us up against the wall, and a cop with a 45 sub would fire over our heads so the bricks would start falling down. Most of us have been in bed, and they ripped the goddamn clothes off everyone, women and men. They had the gun, they just snatched your pants down, and they took pictures of us like that. Then they put us in a wagon and took us to the police station. There were raids made by the Philadelphia Police Department against the, the three locations occupied by the Black Panther Party in Philadelphia. And as a result of these raids, <clears throat> there were a total of uh, 15 people arrested, 13 various types of firearms confiscated with this ammunition, etc. The Panthers were held on false charges of assault, aggravated assault, attempt to kill, battery, and conspiracy. Each one was held on a hundred thousand dollars bail. That public strip search, you know, these are guys. These were the very same men that were serving breakfast to the kids, right? The message that came through loud and clear is, if you thought these are the people that are going to protect you, or that these are the model citizens in your community, you're wrong. Uncoincidentally, these raids took place just days before the Panther organized Revolutionary People's Constitutional Convention, which was to take place in Philadelphia. I think Rizzo and company thought they could intimidate us so that people would not come to the convention. Uh, you know, I think it's the arrogance of power, the miscalculation of uh, the limits of, of what they can do. Through this convention, the Panthers hoped to propose a radical and revolutionary change to the United States Constitution. It was the time when the entire global movement formulated a concrete vision for a new society. Based on rights of women, the rights of children, the rights of students, the rights of, you know, ethnicities, the rights of uh, street people, the question of drugs. Uh, you know, the what about the armed forces? What about the police? How does community control of police work into all of this? The idea was very simple. Rizzo had hoped that the use of force would help dismantle and intimidate the Panthers, but his tactics had the opposite effect. They had been given the word to keep their hands off of us. Rizzo made a mistake in, in judgment when he, uh, when he attacked the party officers. For one thing, a lot of people who didn't 
support us in the beginning came over and supported us. And as far as stopping our membership, our membership jumped from about 60 to about 150, uh, close to 200. Powerful, radical civil rights lawyer William Kunstler worked for the release of the arrested Panthers. He also organized a massive protest against Rizzo in the city's most popular public park, Rittenhouse Square. Both candidates running for Senate in Pennsylvania agreed the Panthers should be permitted to meet. Despite conceding to the politicians' demands, Rizzo insisted that the Panthers were a violent group and that their convention would bring mayhem on the city. He canceled all days off for police officers and made them work 12-hour shifts in pairs to keep more of them on the streets. This tactic created an environment of fear among the convention goers. I think it, it certainly made us all the more unified and attentive to each other because we felt we were in a situation of a high, highly probable danger. In the face of opposition, 14,000 people took part in the Revolutionaries' Convention. They discussed and debated creating a new society founded on Panther ideals. When you stop racism, you stop brutality and murder of black people by the racist occupying army in our black community. That's what we're going to stop. What's being done to us? They were serious about a revolution. They didn't want reform. Uh, they said it's up to African Americans to have a plebiscite on whether to remain in the United States or to have a separate nation. You know, because the Panthers start by talking about redistributing the planet's wealth to the world's poorest countries. That's a remarkable statement for anybody to make. This convention involved thousands of people and there were bitter disagreements. Due to a failure to compromise, police oppression and internal conflict led to the decline of the Panthers. By 1971, the chapter was completely gone. This left a gap of black activism in the city. They wanted to um, dismantle the Black Panthers, and they effectively did so, at least in Philadelphia. It was in the wake of the Panthers' dissolution that Frank Rizzo won the 1971 mayoral election. Despite winning 54% of the vote, Rizzo lost all but one of the majority black wards. Rizzo means business slogans could be encapsulated to mean that he's going to take care of the ends. I mean, I mean the N-word. He's going to control the trouble, keep the streets calm, and let nobody disturb business as usual. The status quo was going to remain in place. That's really what it meant. The power structure would remain, blacks on the bottom, whites on top, and nobody was going to mess with it. As mayor, Rizzo actively targeted the black population. Civil rights activists realized that a hardline approach would be met with police violence. At the same time, white politicians excluded blacks from the city's powerful Democratic Party. Former activists compromised some of their radical ideology to form a political organization, the Black Political Forum. The Black Political Forum was an attempt to put the power uh, drive the uh, sense of getting hold of political, the reins of political power in the hands of a younger generation who would either march with Martin Luther King or rode the buses with the Freedom Rides or went down south with the um, SNCC. Or oh, just demanded now black political inclusion here in Philadelphia. The forum quickly gained influence. In 1983, it helped elect the city's first black mayor, Wilson Good. Good defeated Rizzo in the Democratic primary with 53% of the vote. And I intend to be the mayor of all the people in the city. Today, it is important to remember the conflicts that occurred between the Philadelphia chapter of the Black Panther Party and the Philadelphia police over the expansion of civil liberties, justice, and equality. Power!